Hi, my name is Avril Sorter and welcome to conducting Cisco Unified Wireless Site Survey. In this lesson, we're going to continue our discussion on how to conduct a Layer 1 Site Survey. In this lesson, we're going to start with a discussion on the Site Survey process and we're going to talk about how actually to conduct a Layer 1 Site Survey. And then I'm going to talk about how to find sources of interference using the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool. So that's pretty fun. Once we've done that, you'll get to see me doing a couple of demonstrations. We're going to do a site survey, so you can get to see me walking around conducting a site survey using the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool. And we're going to do that at Train Signal. And we're actually going to find a source of interference at Train Signal. So let's start by talking about the site survey process itself. Now, of course, when you go into the location, you'll have your blueprints, your site plans, etc. And one of the first things you want to do is just take a walk around. So if you're doing a floor of a building, then just walk around that floor and take a look at your blueprints and your site survey and see whether that information is actually correct. Look to see if any additional partitions have been added, new walls, any changes. It's also a great opportunity to start noting down some stuff actually on the blueprints or the site plans. And those would include things like power outlets and also any other obstacles or factors that you think might impede the signal. For example, if you see a mirrored wall or filing cabinets that are full of liquid bottles. I went into one site once and they just had this huge, enormous fish tank, which caused us tremendous problems with our signals. So that was a good thing to note down on the site plans. And then note down on these blueprints and site plans any sources of interference that you see. For instance, as you're walking around, you might detect that there are wireless security cameras. There could be other wireless LANs which are operating there. Maybe you detect that people are using cordless phones. And maybe in some areas on the floor, you may even detect a large bank of microwave ovens. So just note these things down on the blueprints and the site plans. This is also a great opportunity for you to take a look at the existing network infrastructure. See if you can get access to the wiring closet and look at the switches that are there. Note down the manufacturer and the make of those switches. If it's a small business that you're doing a survey for, you may have an opportunity to see where the servers are and you can note down the DHCP, the DNS and the AAA and verify that information that was on the customer survey. If you're in a larger installation, then you'd have that conversation with the IT support people. And again, you're looking to verify the information that's on your customer site survey questionnaire. Now, there are two things you really want to do when you're doing a layer one survey. The first thing is you need to identify any interference sources and then, if possible, resolve them. And how do you resolve uh, an issue with interference? Well, one, you can move the access point to a different channel, a channel that maybe is in a clear spectrum and not suffering that interference. So remember we saw that the microwave was really interfering with the middle to upper part of the 2.4 gigahertz band. So if you're deploying an access point close to a microwave oven, you would probably want to choose channel 1 for that deployment in the 2.4 gigahertz band. You would also want to deploy that access point at least 10 to 15 feet away from that microwave oven. The other thing you can do is potentially you can turn off interference sources. If they're rogue access points, you can ask the people who brought them in to turn them off. Often people will bring in these devices without realizing that it's interrupting the corporate network. So you can just ask them to turn it off. I've been into many manufacturing environments where the sign on the door as you go into the factory environment is 
turn off all Bluetooth devices. And so what they're trying to do there is create an environment where only the wireless LAN is operational. If you cannot remove the sources of interference, maybe they're a neighboring business wireless LAN, then what that might mean is that you'll need to plan around it. And when you plan around it, it may be that you need to deploy more access points. Or it may be, again, that you have to choose different channels, maybe moving to the 5 gigahertz band as opposed to the 2.4 gigahertz band. So when you've done your site survey and you've found the source of interference and you've decided what you can or cannot do about it, then what should you be looking for to get out of the Layer 1 site survey? And it's really to identify those channels which have least interference on them. And you're going to use that then to plan out your wireless network. And you also want to walk away with a list of the interference sources that you can't do anything about, that, that you're going to have to coexist with when you're planning out your Wi-Fi networks. So again, two things. The R of channels with the least interference on them, and then identification of interference sources that you're not able to do anything about. Now, to identify sources of interference, we would want to use the Cisco Spectrum Expert Tool. And the way it works is we'll turn it on and we'll start to collect measurements. So there's really no recipe for exactly how and where to take the measurements. And what I mean by that is we can't tell you, you know, in an office environment, walk up and down and stop every five feet and take a measurement. Or in a warehouse, walk up and down the aisles and take a measurement every 10 feet. How you do the measurements is due to many factors. So for instance, if I went into a site and I saw a lot of interference devices, so let me say I saw wireless cameras and cordless phones, then I would want to take more time over the survey and collect more measurements. If I'm dealing in an open space environment like cubicles and I'm not seeing many interference sources, then I might want to spread out the distance that I'm taking the measurements. Now, obviously, the more measurements you take, the more accurate the information you obtain, the better your site survey is. At the same time, you have to balance that with how long it is actually taking you to take all of those measurements and whether you'll really use all of those measurements. There are different techniques that you can use. One technique that's very popular if you're in an indoor environment what you do is you walk the perimeters and you take measurements periodically. Once you've covered the perimeter, then you walk side to side across the building. Or if you're in an area where you've got a warehouse, you'd walk up and down the aisles. And if you were in an office environment, you'd walk up and down between the cubicles or along the corridors. If you're in an outdoor environment, you would do the same thing. It's always desirable to walk the perimeter first. So you walk the perimeter of where you want to provide coverage. And then what you do is you'd literally look at a street map and you would walk the streets. If you're deploying a mesh network and you're deploying from the top of the buildings, then you would need to go on top of the buildings and take some measurements there as well. You can use the Cisco Spectrum Expert tool to conduct your Layer 1 site survey. Before you start your site survey, you will want to select your spectrum plots that you want to look at. And again, you can choose what works for you. What I like to do when I'm first starting out on my site survey is to set up one spectrum plot for the 2.4 gigahertz band and the second one for the 5 gigahertz band. And in this scenario that you see on this screen, as I'm just setting it up for an indoor environment, and so I'm using the Uni 1 and Uni 2 bands for an indoor. If you were wanting to do an outdoor environment, potentially you'd be using the Uni 3 band.
Now to set up the spectrum, you would go into the control panel and change the frequency settings. Now another option, of course, would be to display both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band on the same spectrum view and walk around and get a broad brush stroke of your measurements. So it's really up to you to really define how you'd like to set up the spectrum views. So if we look at the Cisco Spectrum Expert, some of the things that you'll want to be using are first the channel summary. The channel summary is really good for seeing where most of the RF activity is. It will give you a rough indication as to where the interferers are and how much of that is due to network devices like other wireless LANs. You can then take a look at the devices view, which will show you the devices that are actually causing the RF activity that you're hearing on the channel summary. This will enable you to start detecting what these devices are. Then there are three spectrum plots which are of important 